Karen, do we thank you for getting us together this morning? <laughs> I think so. I, th I, th I think I figured out what was going on. I have to go though. I can't stick around. Okay. Well, but I I don't see um, Becky, so maybe she <laughs> is still. She <laughs> called me and she was having problems logging in. Oh. So um, that might that might have been part of the issue. I think too many people are trying to log in at once as host. So. Oh. Um, Anyway, uh, I can honestly say it would not. I would that I would not have been a culprit for that. <laughs> Hello, Lynn. We missed you. Karen, thanks. Do we still thanks for for missing me. I missed you guys too. But of course, looking at the evaluations, clearly you didn't didn't need me at all to have a great meeting. So, congrats to all of you for making it happen. Karen, do you still think it was one of our larger attended ones? Uh, yeah, I think so. I was looking at the spreadsheet, and I don't have numbers for all of them. But I think that it is probably one of the larger in, let's say, the last few years that we kind of redid the, um, uh, that, that we had the resurgence. So uh -huh. um, the only one that might have been bigger is I, I think when we had it in Lincoln, we did break 100. So it was the sesquicentennial year for the state, and we were in Lincoln for that reason. And right. So. Yeah, that will be a hard one to beat, I imagine. However, I'm sure that Chris can make it happen. And here comes uh, Becky, Rebecca, Becky. She sent us an email. So, apologizing what she's saying. She, she still can't get on. She will continue to try. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Did we ever know who was really going to lead this? <laughs> Clearly it's quiet. <laughs> Probably Becky. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Aaron, for compiling all those uh, stats so quickly. It's pretty impressive. I needed I to get it done as soon as possible because otherwise it wasn't ever going to get done. <laughs> so it was just like, got to get it done. Yeah. I thought there was, uh, there were a lot of good ideas. Um, and I don't recall us ever having that many offering to be um, hosts that far. I mean, theoretically, we could almost schedule four years out. So that's uh, just a, wow. an indication of the uh, enthusiasm. I know we certainly have Stewart for sure, and then maybe Alliance, and then maybe Gage County, and then there was interest from McCook, so. Karen, did you get my late surveys that were left there? Uh, yeah. Did you forward those to Aaron or just to me? I don't believe so. So there was oh. a pile left there when everybody, it's like piles left, just like, well, I think those blue ones need to go somewhere. Oh. Sorry, I've been uh, been training a new person this week, so no, I, I, I saw it it, and I think I don't think I followed up on it. I'm afraid. Well, Becky, we're so thrilled to see you. I'm so sorry. Karen thought maybe the issue was that several were trying to play host. Well, maybe. And the and the poor system was just too confused. Are you going to lead us? Am I going to lead you? Am I getting feedback? That is so weird. I've been having issues with my microphone. This is clearly not Becky's morning. 
<laughs> and I'm sure we can all relate to that. Um, Hi, Micah. Uh, Hey, as an idea, um, what we could do is just kind of go through the survey and just if somebody wants to read out and just go one question at a time going through the survey. And then if anybody has ideas on the results on that, then we could have conversation that way. Way back, he's struggling. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> as an idea to get it going. Yeah. yeah thanks, Thank Michael. you, Bianca. Uh, that seems a reasonable way to start. Aaron, can you pull that up or should we all search our e yeah. inboxes to find it? Erin, I did make you co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. Okay, I don't have it on my computer, so I'm just going to have to read it to you because <laughs> I'm on my laptop and not my my uh, main computer. Okay. Um, so just as a reference, so of course, what I received, what I took home with me is, um, let's see, I think I had 29 responses, and I don't know if there were more that went to Karen or whoever. So my first question was, have you ever attended a Nebraska Museums Conference before? And 20 of them had, um, and nine of them had not. So that's two thirds had. Two thirds. Um, I asked if I liked the current format of the half day of workshop, half day tour, one day of concurrent sessions. 27 said yes, and one person said no. Um, and then the suggestions about how to change the conference format. I guess this is what we can open up to the group. Um, so if you had it, if you saw it, um, at least among the board members, um, did any of you have any suggestions, anything like that? Well, what were some of the suggestions that were offered? Um, let's see, a lot of them worked well, allows for some flexibility. Somebody said they wanted more events on the first day. Maybe a reception or activity Sunday night for those traveling. Um, they'd like a bit more time for networking or structured activities. I want to get I want to get no, want to get to know more. I assume that me meant that they want to get to know more people. Um, somebody said keep what's working. Uh, nice variety, don't change. Um, somebody else suggested one day of workshops, one day of content. But not everybody who who you know, not everybody filled out every single thing. So uh -huh. um, there you go. Yeah. As a uh, as an idea, I think a lot of people kind of go there for the networking aspect. And I think that that's really important, you know, um, and but I feel like, you know, people that are staying at the hotel. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities, you know, before, you know, outside of the structured areas of the conference to network. Um, so I don't know how much that's on to you know, the host to figure out more things to do. But um, I think that the structure works out pretty well. Um, I do like the idea, like I, you know, I like the workshops and I like the keynote and I like a lot of those aspects. So I probably wouldn't change too, too much, but I mean, we can always have, you know, I don't know, building sandcastles or something on <laughs> like on a, you know, the, the Monday thing as like a team building exercise with, you know, I don't, I just, I don't know. <laughs> You know, in the past. Just put it in the chat. Put it in the chat, Becky, and we'll we'll go from there. <laughs> um, one of the things that that uh, AHSGR does at their reception is they do like a, a bingo card or a like a, a person scavenger hunt where um, you have to mill around and like check off boxes or have people sign the little box. Like, um, you know, somebody from this county or this person went to, you know, has this unique thing in their collection or whatever. Um, but that might be a good way of getting people up and out of their tables and out of their little clicks at the reception. Monday night. On Monday night. I guess uh, myself, I could see that maybe there could be a little bit um, of something else on Monday afternoon, not just the tour of various things, but also maybe some other mini workshop or a session or building sandcastles or whatever. <laughs> Well, we used to do the helping hands, but that wasn't always super successful. Yeah. And that wasn't that concurrent. 
With, I think the two R's, yeah. Yes, I, I think so. And so people had to make a choice, but maybe it's a, it's a long time to um, spend when you really don't, it would be good for networking, except for the fact that people have just arrived in some cases. And so it's kind of hard to get to know people. So maybe that's a possibility for uh, Becky and Chris to consider. Uh, one thing that I ended up doing a lot of, I mean, part of the networking, um, you know, you, you have the museums and the museum professionals where, ah, phone call. I'll be one thing, just on a general note that I was amazed about, absolutely shocked about, was how many people we had there. And maybe it was just two that I knew that I happened to come across who were at all volunteer historical societies and they were all volunteers and their passion and their dedication is truly amazing. So the whole thing about um, what, what, where the volunteers post pandemic, you know, in this case, these people were absolutely amazing and they were like sponges. They were just absorbing absolutely everything they could. And I am have the just have the greatest respect for those people. They're doing it out of incredible love and passion for their county. So, in other words, when we decided to kind of try and focus more on the smaller museums, it certainly brought out quite a few new people, I think, or some new people. I would agree with that, you know, volunteer or very little as being a one person. Um, one staff member, the rest are all volunteer. But yeah, that that volunteer group of the others were also informative on the small ones that, like me. How do you get them people? How does that? So that was a combination of community members, staff members, yeah. Mm -hmm. To have all working together. So, and I, again, I, I in my own mind, when we said small, it was all volunteer or maybe only one paid person, one or two, maybe a part-time something, you know, so very, very small in other words. And so it was, I was very heartened to see those, those people there. I don't know if more of you ran into them or if I just happened to run into two sets and they were the only two who were there. I don't know. You know, we did target the small museums. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, sorry, we, should we get back to the survey questions again? Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody's asking me a question about digital images and I forgot that I was using that screen. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. Where were we? What so did this, you is, find? this is what we had, what was the most informative and this is the responses that we got. So if there's a number behind it, that means three people put down Keynote and two people put down Deaccessioning 101. And um, it seemed like everybody kind of liked the variety. Um, so just making sure that we have a variety of things is probably, you know, um, a, a good thing. And when we get to the session topics, you know, you'll see kind of, I was kind of surprised at what they all kind of picked. Um, but yeah, I think, I think almost everything got covered here in terms of what they thought, what they felt was informative. So, like I said, I'm not sure how we're going to talk next year. <laughs> well, I have full confidence that Becky and Chris will pull rabbits out of hats. <laughs> Um, sorry about the in the phone call interruption. Um, no, I I, um, I think on content wise, the number one thing that I got approached with by with a lot like the majority of the different museums was I think you know sustainability, specifically you know fiscal sustainability, and a lot of these you know smaller historical societies working on you know it's like they have all these things that they're barely keeping by on, and let alone expand and do cool things. So. You know, I think that that's something that um, some of these museums are just in, you know, hemorrhage mode, let alone actually doing new things and expanding and being able to afford or hire even a single staff. So I think that that's kind of maybe a divide that we're running into a little bit between, um, 
you know, some of these smaller historical societies. So content wise for next year, that might be something where um, we might be able to focus on some of those smaller museums and figure out like if they're only volunteer driven, what does, you know, they could have some disaster preparedness, but if they don't have any staff to really implement anything or uh, just as an example, but I didn't know if anybody oh, no. else kind of picked up on any of that. Yes. Uh -huh. I I actually talked to the ones that were one of them that were doing, and I said, how do you have as a plan for if you or you or you that are three here, how do you have a plan that we can, you can keep on if something happens to any of you guys? I said, you have to have that backup plan. I did tell them we have like some um, disaster plan and, you know, uh, templates in our website and that, but that was, oh, we're here. I said, you can't guess every day that you're going to be here. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that we might could look at for next year is really taking a look at the, you know, the breakout sec, the concurrent breakout sessions and make sure that maybe one track is, is designed for those smaller museums. And then another track is not saying that they would, they, they couldn't mix and match, but another track is perhaps more palatable for the larger, more established museums mm -hmm. so that you don't have, you know, somebody could look at that and say, okay, you know, I'm a small museum. I'm going to go to the small museum breakout sessions or I'm, I'm larger. So I know that this is going to be relevant for more relevant for us. So just making sure you've got a good mix of those kind of two tracks. I think that's that one of the people I talked to who was, from an all volunteer, fairly new museum, uh, county museum. Uh, she actually, the table I was sitting at for or making the boxes, she actually wanted to be prompted as to which session she should go to since she knew nothing. And so if we actually had on the program, as you suggested, you know, a, more appropriate but, for smaller or, or of special interest to those from smaller museums, et cetera, that might be a help. And it would be incumbent upon us, I think, to to be very up, kind of very upfront with that and say, OK, this is a, you know, maybe you do a little blurb uh, on the website that, you know, audience relevance, this has been designed for smaller museums, maybe volunteer historical societies, that type of thing. Another description might be, you know, designed for more established museums with paid staff and trustees, board of directors, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Just like the larger conferences. What is with your audio, Becky? You just have a, a very, um, a, a level, a pitch in your voice, maybe that. Well, in, in fairness, the Violent Femmes punk rock band made a life uh, a life livelihood out of playing feedback. So Becky, <laughs> Becky may have a career as a punk rocker. Yeah, you have the look, certainly, Becky. <laughs> I would for sure go to the concerts. Thanks, Micah. I'll just jump in with just one thing that I didn't think I handled particularly well, and that was the leaders. And I realized it just as it was starting to happen and the, the round table leaders. I had identified everyone who was going to be a leader, but I didn't make a point of making sure that all the leaders knew who the other leaders were. So that was a little chaotic at lunch, but we worked it out. Uh, Micah, particularly thank you for graciously, you and your wife switching tables. So we didn't have two designated leaders at the same table, not to mention the fact you, you stepped in when we had more people and needed another leader for a, another table. Yeah, no worries at all. I, we had a really good discussion out of that group too. Um, that's mm -hmm. kind of, that was the Platte County Historical Society was the ones that I was talking with there. And they're the ones I was kind of talking about of, you know, they're worried they only have like 20,000 a year. They're only, mm -hmm. and they've got like 19 outbuildings. It's kind of like unreal how they're kind of set up, yet alone have such little resources. And I think like that would be a really good, because I, you know, every historical society, every museum could always use more money. But, you know, for um, I'll pick on our host for next year, Stir, you know, you guys, you know, $10,000 is nothing compared to some of the, you know, if they're a small historical society that gets only 20,000 a year, 10,000 make a big difference. So I think that would, that it just kind of, I think we're almost speaking different languages on some of these. Um, but I think the variety is really good. That's something that the people that I talked with, they really liked, you know, specific things on, um, 
from the boxes and, and preservation to the disaster preparedness, I think everybody got something, which was awesome, you know, uh, and I think that's kind of the goal. To, to kind of to Mike Mike's point with content too, I think that's why it's it's important upon the presenters when they develop that that curriculum, so to speak, is that they keep in mind maybe the the not necessarily the resources, but the technical nature of museum science, which should apply to everybody uh, in some way, shape, form, or another. Because I mean, let's let's face it, you know, the care of artifacts is the care of artifacts. It's something you have to do regardless of whether you got one person or five people. It may, it you know, in theory, it may look different if you've got a whole department doing that, but the principles apply. Same principles apply. So, mm -hmm. you know, pursuing growing developing curriculum where we're it's more principle based than it is resource based mm -hmm. i would I agree with thing. the funding that was something we talked about as those small those smaller ones with volunteers not having funding of some of the different things and not knowing where to even ask that might be something of a, a grant or like their tourism board or any of that. They weren't they weren't familiar with that at all. We really didn't have anything in this conference that was development focused. We almost had one, but the yeah, first Mary, thing that we could have had was um, the this was our conference was on the same week that the big national conference of National Society of Fundraising Executives or whatever its name is now was meeting in New Orleans. So, hmm, Columbus, Nebraska, or New Orleans. Hmm. <laughs> so that the point is that we didn't have a whole lot of people. I did appreciate that um, Mary Yeager continued to come and she had handouts, et cetera. So I actually thought that was kind of a good way to maybe embrace more than what a concurrent session for one day, sessions could one day could provide, is that um, there were quite a few people who just kind of put things on the table. And so that's another way to have a takeaway that you could read at your leisure later. Kelly and I at the end, were picking up all the pieces of paper that were still left on the tables. And so I have a little stack that Mary had handed out, Mary Yeager from Humanities, Nebraska. And so I've kept them because I'm gonna pass them along to other people here in the Kearney area that is a nice little succinct way to say what their, their uh, grant programs are. Sherry, do you have anything to add? I think Teresa was also on the call earlier. Our hosts. Have they left the, the call? No, I'm I'm here. Oh. I just I'm having trouble getting there. Whoa. It's just me. How come that is? Share screen. Well, do what, what do you were there surprises? What what advice do you have for future conferences? What? Well, I I thought things went well. We got a lot of nice comments. So um, I don't know. I well, don't know I certainly I think this was a, certainly one of the first times I could remember where there was so much publicity. And so uh, I think uh, Aaron was the star of screen and TV and newspapers and all that <laughs> with her interviews. Yeah. So that was excellent. Yeah. And Aaron was the one that actually quickly drafted up a, a press release at, at uh, mm -hmm. Sherry's and, and her board's um, suggestion. Mm -hmm. And so that is certainly something that really paid off because it's just giving visibility to not only our organizations, but obviously to all the That's museums. Right. That's right. Um, and uh, just to help people understand what uh, Nebraska NMA does mm -hmm. is good. Um, also, I would mentioned, you know, you talked about TV, and that's correct. Um, new, I don't know if you're familiar with News Channel Nebraska, but they cover the entire state, and they're very much interested in, in 
different activities in the, the different communities. And so um, uh, uh, they're, they're good about uh, giving publicity to the small towns and, and throughout Nebraska. Well, I've learned something already this yeah. morning, Dan. Yeah. Well, News Channel Nebraska was started by Mike Flood in Norfolk. Oh. Uh -huh. And um, he had um, satellite locations like in Columbus and in Nebraska City. And um, it's uh, the name started out as um, a little different, but what he decided to do was do it across the state. And it's um, uh, internet uh, driven in it to a certain extent, but they also have channels and a lot of um, local um, cable companies include their channels um, in your package. And oh. so you can see things, um, see things like um, uh, what they do and, and stuff. And uh, they are really also really good about um, uh, record, uh, broadcasting lo hometown local uh, high school games like football and volleyball and stuff and so they they get quite a following because people get to see those games of, you know without being able to go especially if they can't get to the game live and stuff and uh, so they have a web and a good website but then you also can uh, see them on a lot of the tv channel uh, uh channel that uh will line up mm -hmm. and stuff well, one of the things that Becky, I know Becky's got her feedback issues, but I think this, I feel pretty strongly about this point as well. Um, organizations such as, as ours with the NMA can really begin to build some statewide consensus to get some things done that could benefit all levels of museums in the state. And I know Becky is very interested in some, um, you know, re looking at some legislation that would, um, kind of contemporize some of the verbiage that deals with collections and and what we can and can't do with those collections. Uh, for example, of that would be, you know, it's just simply impractical for small museums of any museums of any stature to have to have to to advertise in a local pepper a paper for 13 weeks. Uh, if there's a you know a founding collection item or something like that. Um, when when the costliness of doing something in the newspaper is so high, in addition to that, the readership of newspaper is very low nowadays. So there has to be better mechanisms in place for being able to uh, advance a deaccessioning project without, you know, freezing the museum's operations because the 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 mechanism is so uh, archaic hmm. um, to do so. So that would take an act of legislation. So going back to our conference, maybe there's a moment in time in the conference where we can kind of come together as a coalition of museums and we can begin to discuss those headier issues that face us, which could include some type of advocacy work at the state level. It could also include a discussion just about the base level understanding of what a museum's purposes are across the state, because there's still within our community, our professional community, we get it. But within the public community, we continue to have folks that see museums as something that is, well, it's an amenity. You know, we don't necessarily need to fund that. You know, it's not as important as, you know, a new road grader, for example, mm -hmm. uh, at the county level or whatnot. And I think that if we could come together and and develop a little collective plan, if you will, around the messaging for the goodness of museums across the state. And then you have all of the museums and the historical societies on that same sheet of music regarding that messaging. Uh, that is something that MA, NMA could promote uh, throughout the rest of the year. And then people would, you know, all, at, at all levels, those museums and historical, historical societies would feel like they're part of something that's bigger than themselves and making an impact. I think that's really mm -hmm. important. Um, at one point, History Nebraska was trying to take the lead in getting some 
revisions made to the Museum Property Act, but I think that with their leadership transition and stuff has has sort of fallen away. Um, I guess Kelly's not on the call, so she would know better than I. But um, but I think that whole advocacy piece is really going to be important um, going forward. The other thing that I would just plant as a little seed is 2026 is the semi-quincentennial of American independence, so the 250th. And weirdly enough, the state in the last legislative session established a semi-quincentennial commission I mean, it was- I'm so impressed you can even pronounce that. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I spent a little time when I was on the National Museum and Library Services Board trying to get my mind wrapped around it. And I finally figured out, okay, semi means half, quin means five, and centennial, of course, means a hundred. Okay. So, you know, if you do the math, it becomes 250. Anyway, um, but I think uh, that commission was established and like nothing has happened with it. The, the governor um, transition, I think, you know, made this get lost. And uh, I'm not saying that NMA needs to be at the forefront really pushing that. But on the other hand, um, since so many of our members are affiliated with historical organizations, um, it's not inconceivable that this like our own state sesquicentennial or like the American Revolution bicentennial way back in 1976 could generate people people's interest and people could start thinking about um, their own local history as part of that larger story. So that might be another vaguely legislative sort of thing. I, I think Brewer actually uh, introduced that bill a couple of years ago, but I, I don't know, Karen, did, um, when you were still at History in Nebraska, was there any discussion about any of that or, or the legislation, uh, other legislation at all? Or maybe she's gone. I she <laughs> said at the beginning that she, oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. I did step up for a little bit, so I missed some of the discussion. Um, yeah, there was some talk. I mean, I was working on the possibility of re. I was leading the, um, help, hoping to redo the Museum Property Act and was okay. looking into that. Um, but I think since I've left and they've had so much change and stuff, I I don't think that there's really yeah much going on in that way. Um, I know that when uh, we did talk to Jordan and she suggested working with their um, lobbyists and that was kind of the idea right when I was there was to do yeah. that yeah. but um, I don't know well and I think they're gonna they're trying to hire a new director now right so um, my understanding was they were going to wait until they're finished with their accreditation to hire a new director so I don't that might be until the summer. Yeah, but I mean within the next. Yeah. 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 So I think just all these big projects are big things are just kind of in limbo. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, and I'm certainly not saying history Nebraska needs to be the um, driving force behind it. I just was curious about, you know, whether that was an option or not. Because I think the initial legislation came out of um, the um, University State Museum when Hugh Genoise was the director there. He really yeah. ran yeah, I so. a bunch of stuff. So, and, and like I, when I was working on the founding collections policy at History in Nebraska, um, I mean, that was the idea was that we were going to take that and modernize it and look at it and stuff. And then, Things happened in my personal life and sure. things yeah. happened in 
Yeah, no, got it. Yeah. Yeah. One of one of the things, one of the things that we could do maybe as a template to move forward is um, and I'm borrowing from my I spent almost seven years on Nebraskans for the Arts board oh. which is which is an advocating organization you know but that's a paid basically a paid lobbying position for the arts in nebraska so like i'm, I'm familiar with how how this mechanism could work for us anyways specifically since we don't have a paid lobbyist but what we could do since you've we've got some resources at our disposal and i, I realize stewart has you know, more, more resources than, than a lot of museums and historical institutions in the state. Um, so perhaps it's easier for me to say than do, but, um, you know, Becky and I, vis-a-vis -vis this group, this board could take a look, and we all collectively could take a look at that uh, verbiage, propose some adjustments, all those things, and then we could get, you know, as endorsed by NMA, once that language is correct, we could take a look at reaching out to our local senator and um, get them get you know meet with them because we do bring a lot to the to to this region as a museum and institution and I think that our our senator recognizes that and it's a fairly benevolent benevolent um, ask of them you know there's nothing politically onerous about supporting museums. Um, we could get them to buy off on sponsoring that bill then, which is the key to have a legislator say, yeah, I will, I will present this at the unicameral. And uh, we could get a commitment from them to do that once we have that language straight. And then they basically will take it from there. Our NMA would come into play when that thing starts to go to hearings, but I'm sure between all of us, we can muster people to go and testify for the changes. I don't think that would necessarily be difficult for us to do, given given the breadth of our of our organizational footprint. Yeah, and next year is the short session, so they won't be uh, trying to pass the state budget and stuff. And sometimes that's a better opportunity to get sort of lesser, if you want to call it that, issues looked at so we we might want to try to think about that as 2023 moves on rather than than letting it go until after the annual meeting next year you're but, right lynn and it's it also has at least precursory when you consider it and you think about it it, it shouldn't have any budget implications at all right the state. right it's just rewording yeah Well, should um, should we create some sort of smaller group to try to look at that, or or do you, Chris, do you want to like be the spearhead for this, or I I can yeah I could I could I could pull I could try to set up a system where we can all collectively look at it, pull the legislation down, you know, okay. put it into it. So I, a I already have all that. Oh, good. Maybe you want to maybe you want to spearhead that then, Karen. And I, I would suggest that maybe a good mechanism for us, since our we're spread apart, is to somehow get that into a Google Doc where everybody can do a. Markup. I already have it in a Google Doc. Oh, hooray! Okay. Then maybe As you could lead us. You're way it. ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could lead us through it then, and okay. we could get her done. Sure. Um, I can send it. Uh, later today to who should I be sending it to Chris Lynn Becky yeah I, I mean I would volunteer to serve on that committee if we're going to form one yeah me too okay like I said um I had pulled all this information together when I was looking at the found and collections policy um, and had done a pretty deep dive during during the during that. Um, Great. Um, and had gathered all the AG opinions and all the legislation. Um, so I already have that all together. So 
Excellent. I would say the work of this committee is already far along. I think what we there I think what we need to do is look at other states have similar laws and have updated their laws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be the, the next step. And, and I apologize uh, with the, my change in job and oh. uh, my husband's heart surgery. It just has gone on the wayside and I haven't been able to work on it. Well, Karen, then you're the only one that's ever happened to. <laughs> yeah. No, we just appreciate the fact that you've got that leg work done you know because um, yeah. that is so then we're not starting from scratch so that's great and you need to be really clear with us too in terms of what what works for the reality of your current situation as well so don't don't let us abuse you uh the other thing you might consider doing and aaron could probably do this you know there is the cosma organization which is the coalition of the small yeah. of, of museum of uh, state museum associations like MMA. And so uh, through that uh, vehicle, I might be able to find where they're, where, what states have done some, something similarly relatively recently. That sounds good. Um, yeah. Cosma has just, <clears throat> excuse me, has just, um, we're getting away from the workshop or the, the, the conference, but they did compile all the results from the sessions that I attended and they sent a PDF out and unfortunately I can open it. So hopefully they'll send that to me again so I can forward it to the board. So um, we only have about like 10 minutes left. So, um, but this is great. This is, I mean, um, the, the conference, you know, spurs us to for all these topics and all these things like that. Um, quickly with the uh, with the um, 250th, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Um, AASLH has been sending out stuff and prompting things, and they're doing workshops right now, um, sort of encourage trying to encourage people to um, start working on it. So we might be able to just, just take what they're doing and and make it work for us as well um so the uh the sessions seem to go very well um got a lot of things for um um potential topic ideas and we've mentioned some of those as well programming was the top vote getter um the next one was outreach um exhibits was another one um so there's a whole bunch of things that we can probably pull from related to that um specific collection related ones because i think i put that in there just so people would have a lot of times collections tends to come up about every other year um it seems like photographs almost everybody was interested in some sort of session relating to photographs um so maybe we can get karen to do a, a session on photographs or a workshop on photographs um again? related to that again <laughs> well, well it was so good it was so good I, well, I'm always happy I think to do anything. So many new things. I think since we had so many new people, I think that's that just we it. Recycle then, some of the older ones. And my workshop was virtual, so I don't know if maybe. Yeah. yeah, one of the things so. I noticed with the with the workshop suggestions, I didn't consider a lot of those as to be workshop sessions. To me, a workshop has hands on that sort of thing, but that's just me. Um, so, but that's obviously something that we can get into later, but this is, this is what they were suggesting in terms of what they would like to see in terms of sessions. Um, and then one of the suggestions was 3D objects. So I just took that to me, just regular objects. So, um, and then on to the round table, um, everybody seemed to, to really enjoy the round table things. There were several suggestions in terms of topics. Um, it was kind of interesting. There was, a couple said, well, there were too many at their table. And someone else said, well, we didn't have enough people at our table. So <laughs> it's, it's, I think, I think maybe a suggestion that I would have for the round table and maybe to help with the networking thing um, is maybe to hand out numbers to people and then they go and sit at that table. Because I know that people who came together sat together. And I think that if they would sit at other tables, they would get a little bit more information and different perspectives 
Um, and that way, you know, all the people from one group is, isn't getting all the same information, but we can kind of spread it out. That would just be an idea for me. You know, everybody pulls a number, or we assign a number and say, okay, go to that table, that table, that table. And I think and that, that a, would help. With and that then you have a mix kind of, of people too, head. there was a comment. Hmm. Oh, sorry. An idea that popped into my head when you were saying that was kind of like speed dating style, where like, what if we have people with the questions and you go table to table to table and you have different topics and you just kind of talk about it that way. It might be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I'm glad that this the the, the round table and the open mic, um, people seem to like the open mic sessions as well. Um, Although we had a couple of comments about they wanted to leave for the drive home, but that's kind of an always an issue, you know, the last session people want to leave, um, shorten it. Um, it. Since it was new this year, people might not have been prepared to talk, that sort of thing. Um, and I, I will put in that I made an error. It is a open mic. It should have been M-I-C, not M-I-K-E. So apologies to everyone <laughs> who might be named Mike. And then um, several people, not as many as I thought, but we had a few people who were willing to present. And then quite a few people who said they would, their organization would be willing to host, which I thought that was great. And then the, the basically the comment section is at the very end. Um, had had some really good content uh, uh, um, information. Um, there were a couple of things people kind of pointed out, um, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, the so one about the reception, I sat with her at, lunch, at dinner and she was just like a negative Nelly about everything. So, I'm uh, like, did, did, oh. didn't you, didn't we have a thing on the uh, registration form about if you had food preferences or the food issue? There was a comment that if you were, a vegan there wasn't a lot or some something or other or you were gluten intolerant or something and i thought i thought that there was a place for people to let also, us know there was plenty of protein there at that night at at that night because there was swedish meatballs there was um shrimp there was cheese there was mushrooms i so i don't know i think People like to complain to complain. Okay. I mean, a big guy like me, I was full. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone starved. No. So, yeah, but I think, I mean, these are, obviously there's some pretty good, con, uh, you know, um, ideas and had mostly, mostly positive results. I didn't hear much of, uh, you know, um, didn't hear a lot of complaints, but um, you know, one or two little things, but I think everything really went well. And as I've said before, Columbus set the bar really high. And I and I hate to tell you this, Sherry, but Dennis already said that, hey, they want us to come back. And I'm like, well, did you ask Sherry that? So <laughs> it's like, well, in three or four years can come back. And I'm like, okay, well, thanks. <laughs> so, um, so well, yeah. Sherry, Sherry may be retired by then, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so. But yeah, so yeah, thanks to everybody at Platte County. You guys did a, a, a great job. It was fun so, having you all here. So good. Do we have any ideas? Um, maybe this is for the, the Platte County people. Who? How many people went through where at the, the different tour stops? I mean, do you have any ideas? Or We had close to, at the museum here, we had to close to 50. Okay, that's great. And I, I heard tell that tables were full at Glore's. And I have not heard about other places, but okay, but that's good. I to was know. pleased with the turnout that came to our museum. So great, and they were very complimentary, so that was nice. <laughs> that's always good to hear. Yeah. So. so, anybody, anything, anything, uh, anybody else wants to add? Uh, I, I would say on those tours that it was just um, a little uh, unfortunate that the two. The, the 430 tours at two places, the Firefighters Museum and or Fireman's Museum and the Evans House uh, evidently didn't take place. So, um, you know, but everybody had already seen a lot. It was late in the afternoon. So I don't think anyone was grumbling about it. Okay. 
Okay. Anybody have anything else? No, just thank you everybody for your hard work. It was really nice. And Aubrey, you always do a great job. <laughs> you can put that in the past tense. <laughs> thank you. I thought there was just a you know, amazing amount of energy. Uh, the thing that I thought was most remarkable was you all just pitched in when something needed to be done. And I thought that was very impressive. The keynote speakers, uh, Mike doesn't work. Two people just are right on it, get it taken care of. You know, lights don't work in a presentation. You know, somebody put, somebody finds a cable. I mean, you, you all just stepped up to help where the help was needed. And I think that speaks a tremendous amount of the collaborativeness that we enjoy in NMA. The silent auction was wonderful. I think we were right around $700, like we guessed it, it guessed me the other day on that very rough thing. I'll have to get that at my the um, regular board meeting that way, but that, that did a good, a good job and just recording those different things for half. My own thing is that it looked like it was a lot more work than what you maybe thought it was going to be, Becky. So blessings to you all for, for just going with the flow and making it work. Well, if there's nothing else, thanks everybody for all your hard work at the conference. So appreciate everybody who came. So like I said, you, you guys are going to have a, a, a big shoes to fill next year, Grand Island. So, <laughs> so we're, we're going to hold it to you, hold it to you. So, <laughs> well, I don't, if there's nothing else, I think we're done. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye, all. Bye.